We're back in the big tent again, and I was very lucky. I just got to be on a fantastic panel with some fantastic women, and I'm gonna let them introduce themselves, only because the one time I try and do it, I'll mess up someone's name, even though I know all of them rather well. Hi, I'm Lisa Witter, COO of Fenton Communication and co-author of The She Spot, Why Women Are the Market for Changing the World and How to Reach Them. I'm Marie Wilson, and I'm president and founder of the White House Project and author of Closing the Leadership Gap, Why Women Can and Must Help Run the World. I think Marie probably didn't even need an introduction. We all know her over at Blog Her fairly well. <laughs> I'm Sarah Granger. I'm managing director for Future Campaigns, who provides uh, political organizations and nonprofits, and I blog for Blog Her. You sure do. We just sat on a panel that was fantastic, and one of the things that we touched on that I wanted to talk about just a little bit more was when we talked about what the next phase of feminism was, or the next wave, which you wholeheartedly rejected. You didn't want to hear about any waves. Tell me again about that. Well, we keep waving over our victimization, which is real. I mean, there's still issues for women, you know, everywhere we look. But what we need to do to permanently change things now is right in front of us, and that is getting into the power positions of this country in every sector but particularly in the political sector because everything we care about is decided by some place in the legislature. Now, I know corporations are still very powerful, etc., but we and we want women in corporate power. But if we really put our mind to getting into leadership now, to really running enough women, to putting enough women up, to flooding the pipelines to power with women, we would change it. We would look like Norway, who had enough women in power in Norway to actually tell the publicly traded companies of Norway way to have 40% women on their boards and now they do which has started a movement in Europe to do this so we got to stop waving on whatever's bad and start getting power well and one of the things about power that we talked about one of the questions that was asked was what does Barack Obama need to do to continue to secure women voters right. and just to speak off what Marie said it you know women aren't single issue voters they they want to connect they want to care we want to hear more about his relationship to his mother and his grandmother who actually was a Rosie the Riveter and worked on the uh, production line during the war and that was forced to come off it um, to go back to her role but one of the things that I called for and I know other people are talking about is asking Brock really if you believe in women's leadership, then you need to make a 50% commitment to having 50% of the cabinet be um, women. So we're hoping that he's listening to this. Maybe we should start a little email campaign that he'll do it, just like Michelle Bachelet in Chile did. And we actually decided on stage, you heard it here first, we'd like to hear Senator Obama commit to 50% women in his cabinet. So there you go, you heard it first on stage, up at the dig stage and then down here. Sarah, what did you take away from this panel? I was so impressed by all of the panelists, <laughs> but mostly I just was thinking about the sort of the big picture. Everyone was talking really high level about all the issues that women face as women voters, supporters, activists, and, and really all of the statistics were so impressive about how active and involved women really are and we don't realize it. For some reason that's not getting out there, like the fact that we're the majority on move on, that's a great, that's a great thing to know. Yeah. So we just need to take advantage of this power that we have, like Nancy Pelosi's book, you know, it's something about use your power, so we need to Absolutely. do that. Our, our moderator has joined us. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, Jamu Green. I'm the local director and one of the founders of WomenCount.org. I'm going to let you hold the mic, Jamu. Fantastic. What did you take away from the panel today? Well, I definitely think that it's always great to be on the stage with such powerful women, and I mean, that in itself was great, but Really, I think just looking at the lessons that we learned coming out of this historic primary that we kept talking about, that there really is an opportunity on the internet and there really is an opportunity with Senator Obama to engage women in ways that we've never seen before. And I think it was a great discussion about what's already happening, but also what you know can happen in the next six six weeks we have before the general election? Wait, only six weeks? Really? Oh my goodness. One last thing before we go, and I'm going to ask Jamu, because, because I know that she's one of the ones who hasn't entirely healed yet. She's doing great. She's getting behind her party. But she's not entirely healed. What do you want to hear? You asked us what, what we thought Senator Obama should say. I want to know what you want to hear him say. Well, he healing is a, is definitely a process, but you know I am a lifelong Democrat, and I'm a Democrat because there are a set of core issues that drive me, and I absolutely understand that Senator Obama is in the right place on those issues. 
Um, so I think that you know that's separate from just having spent almost a year of your life um, working to accomplish something that we came close but didn't. And, and that's a process. Uh, that's the healing process I'm going through. But I, I don't have any doubt in my mind that Senator Obama um, is right on the issues. Now I think um, even though we see a very significant gender gap already in the polls, that he is doing very well with women, you know, there's we of course want him to do even more, um, even better. And I think it is um, in many ways some of the things we talked about on the panel that we need to see him with more women. We need to um, see his, uh, you know, leadership and staff and team uh, be reflect uh, more women. We need to hear from him how his cabinet will, uh, and I do believe it is will, um, reflect women and how the administration overall and all of the different positions in the agencies, um, as Lisa talked about. Um, but it's also, I think, to uh, hear him uh, acknowledge, um, I think, how close we came and, and that how important that is um, to some women out there. And just that acknowledgement, I think, is also a part of the healing process for a lot of people who who are still going through it. Thank you so much. Thanks for a fantastic afternoon panel, everyone.